Hey guys, it's Theodore again. Back with an update starting off where my last post ended. As I said, I'm on a job currently. Originally, I wasn't meant to be back so soon, but after the feedback I received from my last post as well as the current predicament I find myself in, I thought it wise to keep myself occupied as I sit here waiting in my motel room. To start off with, I'd like to tell y'all how I receive my jobs from the government and the different types of jobs I receive. I'll receive a text on my work phone when they have a job for me. These texts consist of simply a few letters, each letter standing for the type of job this is as well as the pay involved. I'll start with job types. NU stands for non-urgent, meaning I can choose whether I want to accept or not. If I want to accept a job or not, I'll send back a message reading simply the letter A, accepted, or U, unaccepted. These jobs typically consist of shooing away non-dangerous cryptids such as the more passive species Fae, maybe a small gnome problem. In other causes, it's a low-risk extermination job such as burning a nest of dog roaches. Yes, dog cockroach hybrids. Or a tribe of goblins attempting to settle the area. The next type of job would be MI. Jobs labeled MI stand for moderate importance, meaning low risk, but it still could be dangerous. These jobs are typically given when an individual dangerous cryptid or a small group are settling in an area tending to be cryptids that breed or create more of their own, such as wendigos, rakes, mothmen, and vampires. These jobs tend to be tricky, but usually pay well, hence why I accept them the most. The final job type are U, job standing for urgent. These are the most dangerous types of jobs without the option to deny or accept. They're jobs you are specifically accepted for based on your skill set, ability, and resources. These jobs are typically when a large group of cryptids are settling an area, when a town, village is assaulted by dangerous cryptids, when a government experiment escapes, or when the absolute most dangerous, absolutely batshit cryptids are loose out in the wild. These cryptids can either be those previously stated or a more recent problem. A cryptid type called Hell's Angels. Named after the well-known motorcycle club, they tend to be big, burly, bearded, and unnaturally strong creatures akin to demons sporting horns, dark skin, black eyes, and blackened wings. Since they only became a problem recently, we know little to nothing about Hell's Angels, except what they're here for, how they enter our world, and the threat they propose to our society as a whole. They're here for one thing, and one thing only, to exterminate the human race. In the paranormal community, it's been speculated that the ones we've dealt with up until this point are simply scouts, sent here to assess the situation and threat posed to them by humanity should they launch a full-scale assault. As for how they enter our world, they use a rift, or a portal if you will. A doorway between worlds typically manifesting in an unpopulated, secluded area such as forests, abandoned buildings, and caves. I've only ever had a run-in with one Hell's Angel and it was a challenge to defeat him to say the least. Luckily, we now have machines built which can detect when and where a rift is opening. Techs are sent and usually a team of detached agents such as myself are sent out to handle it, due to the fact that any common agent wouldn't stand a chance against the Hell's Angel. Anyways, back to it. The amount of pay is simply displayed by numbers. One meaning low pay, typically for NU jobs. Two meaning moderate pay, tending to be for MI jobs. And three, which is for U jobs. I receive these texts on my work phone, which I check hourly. If I accept the job, or if it's a you job, I then proceed to head out to my PO box, inside of which I'll discover all of the necessary files and documents on the specific job I'm required to complete. I will then head to my lockup, grab the necessary equipment for completing the job, such as guns, my flamethrower, a crossbow, sword, etc., or more obscure equipment such as those used to handle cryptids, which conventional means tend to be useless against. Upon completion, I will then send a text reading CPR or completed, payment required. I will then be wired my payment from an unknown source. They say every story, even fiction, has an aspect of truth to it. Whether it's inspired by theories such as faster than light travel and sci-fi or based on actual true events or urban legends, there's always an aspect of truth. Especially in the thousands of creepypastas I've seen on this website. Have you ever wondered why this is? Why they're so popular? Why you can't seem to escape these stories of various cryptids or supernatural entities? It's because it's real. It's all real. It's believed by many, myself included, that you are being drip-fed these details, these depictions of paranormal creatures beyond your comprehension. And you go to sleep at night telling yourself, hey, it's only fiction, they won't get me. 
What is it? And own it? The reason for all of this is because these creatures are not only present in our world, but they are abundant. Should you come across one of them, whether it be a wendigo or a gnome, it's preferred that you have some idea on how to deal with these creatures. This is why I believe my posts here haven't been taken down yet, why the government continues to allow these words to appear on your screen. You're probably cuddled up in bed on your phone reading this right now, or at your computer desk. You believe this is merely a story, a tale spun by an avid fiction writer, but is it? You are being drip-fed. You are learning about the supernatural without the blanket of ignorance being lifted. This is what they want. Whether they're is a creature lurking outside your bedroom window waiting for you to fall asleep or not. I hope you enjoy my stories regardless. Anyways, on to the series of events that have taken place over the last 24 hours. I am in shit. The reason why you're getting an update so quickly is because there's something lurking in the forest outside of my motel as I write this. I have no internet, so it may be a few hours before I'm able to post this, if at all. I don't know if I'm going to survive tonight, but if you're seeing this, it means at the very least I was able to live a couple extra hours. The story starts where I left off. Yesterday, after finishing my previous post, I looked at my work phone and I had received a text from my employer reading, MI2, moderate importance, moderate pay. I sent back a text reading, A, hey, accepted. I grabbed the keys to my pickup and head towards the door, planning on picking up some breakfast along the way to my PO box. As I drove, I reflected on my previous post thinking about what I'd post next. Maybe a guide on how to survive the paranormal. Places to avoid. Accounts on different cryptids you've likely never heard of before. Or should I simply post stories to keep it interesting? Hope you would pick up something along the way. Deciding to do both, I started picturing the layout and format of my next post. What I settled on is what you previously saw and what you'll see in future posts. Maybe I'll make a few posts focusing on specific topics, but they will most likely be stories. After pulling into the diner and taking my breakfast to go, I proceeded to my P.O. box. Stepping out of my car and beginning to walk to my P.O. box, I felt a shiver run down my spine, my senses of intuition kicking in. Looking back, that should have been my first red flag, but I didn't take much notice as this wasn't the first time this happened. It just meant this job would be more challenging than I currently believe it will be. Boy, was that an understatement. Reaching my P.O. box and opening it, I see the file containing the details of my next job. Picking it up and taking it back to my vehicle, I decided to sit for a while, eating my breakfast, drinking my coffee, and opening the file. Inside were four documents containing necessary info on the specific cryptid I would be hunting. Things I would need to bring with me for the hunt, precautions I would need to take, and a few photographs of the cryptid. The photographs are what gained my attention first. It was quite large in proportion to the oak tree surrounding it, walking on its pale, bony front and hind legs, not a single hair on its entire body. Its eyes were a shade of black I had never seen before. It wasn't just the absence of light, it was as if the light around its face was being sucked into those gaping chasms as if they were black holes. Even in the photograph, the ink seemed to shimmer and distort, obscuring the rest of its features. All I could make out were those cold, black eyes. Placing the photographs on the seat beside me, I began to read the files. In big, bold words at the top of the page. Name. Animus. Huh. I muttered to myself. Animus is a Latin word for mind. Which is a suitable name, considering these creatures were famous for distorting your perceptions of things. They have a telepathic ability which far rivals even my own. Commonly mistaken for shapeshifters, these creatures will make you see what they want you to see even in photographs. While their ability did have less effect, any common man would simply see a person or a dog or whatever the creature willed you to see. Anonymous' ability works through its eyes. The moment you look into them in person, your individuality will cease to be. You will be completely at this creature's will. Quite a useful ability considering they feed exclusively on humans. Needing to feed a large amount before reproducing, the only way for a normal person to identify them is from their fingernails. They are completely black. Easily mistaken for nail polish, though. This is why these creatures tend to take the form of a young woman. They're made even more dangerous by the fact that they possess near-human-like intelligence despite looking more akin to an animal than a human. You would expect them to be stupid. You would be sorely mistaken. The reason why this job is listed as moderate importance for me is because there was only one of them. 
It had taken up residence in a small motel off a highway a few miles away from me, in the middle of a large forest, a common dwelling of these creatures considering their pale skin. They were quite vulnerable to sunlight. As for why it had taken up residence at a motel, it was likely to trick weary travelers into buying a room and devouring them in their sleep, their favorite time to strike. Being a detached and considering my own telepathic abilities, I'm partially immune to these creatures' mimetic effects and abilities, although they can alter my perception and essentially shapeshift. They can't control my actions, and I can look into their eyes without being completely taken over, hence why it appeared in its natural form within the photograph to me. Now, despite their bony arms and legs, their skinny frame and exposed ribcage, their skin is akin to diamond, meaning it can't be punctured by conventional means. The only way to kill this beast would be to burn away its skin using a UV light and puncturing its heart with silver. Reading all I needed to know, I slipped the documents and photographs back into the file, placing it in my pack and heading to my lockup to retrieve the necessary equipment and form a strategy. Upon arriving at and entering my lockup, I look over my gun rack, seeing my assorted selection of weapons, some of them anomalous themselves. After carefully considering which gun I would take with me on this mission, I decided to take my SV Dragunov, a powerful sniper rifle with a few minor alterations I'd made. Fixing a high power UV flashlight to it and retrieving some silver armor piercing rounds from my ammunition station, I wondered if maybe this was overkill. After all, this was the first animus I had ever faced, but it's better to be safe than sorry. Proceeding to grab my M16, also loaded with silver armor-piercing rounds, I decided to grab two silver daggers as well as a nail bomb, also containing silver. After placing my daggers on my belt, my guns and bomb in my pack, I walk over to the table in the center of the room, grabbing a half-empty bottle of whiskey and taking a swig. I considered my options. What would my strategy be? After around 30 minutes of drinking and brainstorming, thinking over previous jobs of a similar nature, I landed on the idea of acting as bait. I would head to the motel, head to the front desk, acting oblivious to the creature's true nature and buy a room. I knew there would be no other guests because at this point, authorities had already sealed off the road. This wouldn't work to my advantage. Deciding to call a fellow agent embedded in the FBI, I requested that he loan me a few agents for the evening. The reason for this would be so that I could avoid the animus being suspicious of me being the only guest for the evening. They would sleep in the rooms furthest from the front desk while I slept in the one closest assuring it would come from me first. These agents would be given a brief description of the cryptid we were dealing with, and be advised not to look directly into its eyes, lest they be under its complete control. The agents would be advised to stay out of it, unless I desperately needed the help, but under strict orders not to engage the creature head on, simply providing cover fire for me should I fuck up, allowing me to regain the upper hand. I would lay in bed, with my M16 stashed under the covers facing the wall, and wait for the creature to enter my room. The common man would not hear it entering, since these creatures are incredibly stealthy, but with my enhanced hearing, I knew I would. So upon it entering, I would jump out with my gun in hand, switch on the flashlight, burning away its skin, and fire as many rounds as I could straight into the beast's heart. Now, I know what you may be wondering. Why not just walk into the front of the building and just shoot it? Well, not only would it see this coming from a mile away, a man entering the building with an M16 in hand, but it would immediately be able to duck for cover. I needed it out in the open, in the middle of my room, and I needed to catch it by surprise. Since it has the ability to cause humans to fall into a deep slumber, an ability which luckily doesn't work on the detached, it would be expecting me to be in a deep slumber. With everything prepared and my plan fully fleshed out, I set off in my pickup towards the direction of the motel. It was a few hours trip, in which time I listened to narrations of creepypastas from this subreddit, stories from other agents and, well, some of the cryptids these guys have fought without struggle, I've got to say. I wouldn't mind having some of you guys at my back in a sticky situation. I could sure use a few of you here right now. Upon arriving at the motel, I saw that my team had already arrived, an assortment of vehicles parked out front. It really just looked like a normal motel on a normal day. Yet there was nothing normal about it. Yet again, a shiver ran down my spine. That same warning sign that something would go wrong, and again, I shrugged it off as just jitters. After all, this was my first time doing battle with an animus. Parking my pickup into a space right by the room I planned on taking, I entered the front of the building. Swinging the door open as nonchalantly as I could, I forced a yelp back down my throat. It was as if I could feel it in the air. 
I could sense what it was just by being in its vicinity. While I believed this would help me later on, it still gave me goosebumps. Looking over at the front desk, I saw it, looking almost exactly like a young woman in her 20s, a rural girl, with a few noticeable differences. Her nails were pure black, her brown eyes seeming a little too dark, and an unnaturally wide, toothy grin spread across her face. Welcome to Dark Oak Motel. My name's Mandy. How can I help you today? She said with a sweet voice, no different to a human female. Yeah, hi. I'm looking for a room to spend the night, preferably the one right outside my car there. I've got a bad back, and it just makes it easier to move my bags to and from my room. I sat rubbing my back for effect. Why, sure, sir. That would be room 14. She said, peering over my shoulder at the placement of my vehicle. That'll be $40 for one night. How would you like to pay for this? She said in a polite and charming voice. With cash, please. I said, retrieving my wallet. After paying, she led me to my room and made sure I was well situated, then handed me the key. After she'd went back to her spot in the front of the building, I walked out to my car and retrieved my pack. Heading back into my room and placing my weapons in their necessary spots, I decided that tonight I would sleep with my belt on, the dagger strapped to my sides accompanied by a UV flashlight, but concealed by the blanket in case I needed to get up close and personal. My M16 placed beside the bed closest to the wall for later, when I needed to lift it into my bed with me. After setting everything up, I eye up the whiskey bottle I had placed on the bedside counter, considering a drink for a second, but deciding against it as I needed to keep my wits about me. Heading out into the day, I see that by now the sun was nearing the horizon, and deciding on a dinner of snack machine foods, I head over with my wallet in hand. Passing by one of my team members on my way to the snack machine, giving him a subtle nod as I passed, I decide on a bag of Lay's and a can of Coke to be my dinner. Heading back to my room and eating my small dinner, I decide to call it a night, get some rest considering I'd need it. As I lay there clutching my M16 close to my body, I felt a rush of anxiety build up in my chest. Feeling that same chill down my spine I'd already experienced several times that day, I sighed to myself. This will be a very long night indeed. After waiting for a few hours, watching as the light slowly disappeared from my wall until it was almost complete darkness, only illuminated by the street lamps outside, I decided to focus on my enhanced hearing. Listening, I could hear the members of my team settling down, a few tossing and turning, others brushing their teeth, one on the phone with his wife, but after a few hours when they'd all settled and I'd long since heard any noise come from the main building, that same feeling of anxiety built up in my chest again. What if something were to go wrong? However unlikely that may be, why hadn't I fleshed out a backup plan? I heard my team tossing and turning. Unusual considering the animus is said to put people into a deep and still sleep once they had passed out. Then I heard it, the door slowly opening. Readying myself waiting to hear a footstep enter my room so I could whip up my gun and nail this fucker, it rings out in my mind as I jump up, switching on my flashlight and shooting the creature right in the chest. I see a look of fear and shock as the creature topples over its long and bony body spread out across the floor. I allow myself a moment of victory, looking up at the ceiling and cheering. Hearing a still human-like moaning coming from the floor, I look down and my blood runs cold. I see one of my team, one of my agents laying there, blood pooling underneath him as he takes his last breaths. Left speechless, I just stand there in a trance. Had I just murdered one of my own team members? No, this had to be the animus playing tricks on me. Maybe taking the form of one of my agents after it had been shot for help and sympathy. But that wouldn't explain how it hadn't changed back upon dying. Then I heard a shrill shriek from the night outside, followed by distorted laughter. Heading out there with my rifle at the ready, I head to the next room over from me, where an agent is stationed. Attempting to knock on the door, I'm shocked as it opens by my touch. Inside I see a pool of blood, but no body. Heading over to all the other rooms, I see the same scene. The Animus had slaughtered every single one of my agents and taken their bodies to feast on them. You fucking bastard! I yelled out into the night. I was met with only the same shrill laughter. That was when I realized what happened. The agent I had shot had looked into the creature's eyes earlier that evening. He was under that thing's control. He had likely told the creature everything he knew of the plan. The creature then hatching a plan of its own, killing all of my agents and augmenting my perception to see the agent under its control to my door having me kill him as part of some sick fucking joke. It now knows who I am and what I am. I don't have to explain to you why I don't want to be caught by this creature, but I will regardless. I can't die, and I have a regeneration ability, meaning I would be a limitless supply of food for this creature and its young. 
unless I resign my body and pass on from this world, which I simply won't do, not while I have unfinished business in this world. I decide to run back to my room, hearing the creature's footsteps not far behind. I enter and slam the door, grabbing my UV flashlight and placing a vase over it, showering the room with the UV light. This is where I still am right now. Typing this out on my laptop, I still hear its shrill laughter from outside, hearing it skitter across the pavement, and what's worse is I think it's given birth. I hear what sounds like a human baby's cries coming from the main building. I'm preparing to make my last stand, as I don't have any cell reception and can't call in for backup. I can see the flashlight is running out of power as I type this. I doubt it will last till morning, so whatever I'm going to do, I'll have to do it right now. I can't replace the flashlight with the one from my gun as I'll need it to be able to kill these creatures so I'm simply going to gather my equipment, try to come up with a plan and make my stand. If I survive, you'll be seeing a lot more of me on this subreddit, including a follow up story but if I don't, it's been an honor. I hope you've enjoyed what I've written thus far and I hope you heed my words. Cryptids exist and you are not safe. Until next time, Theodore Coulson.